Hey everybody, welcome to another Scrawler Box unboxing. It's my favorite day of the month. Let's go ahead and see what I got. I'll try my best not to ruin the surprise, so we'll look at that card later. But already I see we've got some sort of paint pen that fell out, but let's see the rest that's inside. Immediately I just see Copic written on the box, which is so exciting. It looks like there's some other stuff besides markers in there, which I don't know much about Copic. I just know about their alcohol brush pens, but we've also got a kneadable eraser. I'm not going to open that because I actually just opened a few of my own, so I'm going to save that for later. Now, it's pretty typical for these boxes to come with a nice pencil. It looks like this one is a two and a half HB. I've never heard of that number system having halves in it, so that's interesting. And we've got that white paint pen. It's 0.5, so it's pretty small, which is actually really nice. Now for what I'm most excited about, and that is the Copic markers. It looks like there's two markers and two pens in here. So I didn't actually know that Copic made pens. I've never owned any Copic products. So I'm really excited about this. I've always wanted to try their markers. So these markers look to be a little bit different, so let's check them out. Now I know that Two is a parent company of Copic. I don't know if it's normally written on the markers, so I don't know why that is. But these are the Copic Chows. They come with a brush nib on one end and a broad chisel nib on the other end. They only come in about half as many colors as the Copic Sketch, and they're a little bit less in the quality area, but they're also more affordable. So for a beginner, I think those are pretty good to start with. So next we have a Copic Multiliner in the color Wine. It's actually 0.3, so it's very, very thin. I kind of wish it was in black, because I feel like I'd get more use, but these boxes wouldn't be fun if all the markers came in black. This last pen is a pink glitter pen. It actually doesn't say Copic anywhere on it. It just says the two markers. So I'm wondering if it's a different brand. There's the candy you get in every box and you get a sticker in every box, but here is a pen that's designed to look like that sticker. It's to celebrate their 50th box and it's actually a very nice quality pen. Every month you get this little card that describes all the products in the box. It also includes a scrawler challenge, which you're supposed to do using these products. This month is dressed to the nines. This month you also get two pieces of Canson paper. It's 220 GSM and it's double sided and even the Copics won't bleed through them. It's really exciting that this month's artwork was done by Drawing with Waffles because I believe she's actually where I heard about Scrawlerbox and I love her YouTube channel. Now for the best part, we get to play with these products for the first time ever. I've been really loving this purple color lately. I think I just tried to show you that that's the color I have on my nails, which doesn't match exactly, but I was just really happy that my first Copics ever were colors I love. Now the downside is you can see how much it bleeds through paper. Now this isn't the paper that came in the box that was meant to use with it, but it is a really thick, really nice paper and it did bleed through, so that's the one downside. I really love this pink glitter pen. I don't know why, I guess the girly side of me will always love pink and glittery things. I doodled that little heart without even thinking about it. The last Copic we have is the Wine Fineliner. It's 0.3 and you can see it's extremely thin. My handwriting actually looks kind of bad because I've never used such a thin fineliner. Last we have this white Derwin paint pen. I'm really glad it's white because it's great for adding highlights to sketches and paintings. One tip with it, the reason it's not showing up extremely bright here is because I'm writing on the edge of it like you would a pen and it actually shows up a lot better if you write straight down. This month I just have no motivation to do the challenge of dress to the nines because that would involve drawing an entire person and I'm actually taking a drawing class right now so I can hopefully get better at drawing things like that. 
but for now I just want to play around with these markers so I'm gonna make a tracker for my bullet journal and I'm actually gonna try and test them out since I know they're alcohol markers I'm gonna see if you can use them like alcohol ink so first off I'm making a sleep tracker I thought that these colors were very like calming and relaxing so it would be a good color scheme for a little cloud and sleep tracker chart. I'm thinking about actually using this color scheme for January so I'm not going to actually put these in my journal yet. I'm going to hold them off until January. I will use them then. I wish I could use Copics directly in my bullet journal but of course it'll bleed through all of the pages. So I'm actually using that Canson paper that came in the box and it didn't bleed through that at all so if you need paper to use with your Copics that would be perfect. This box I'm about to do is the biggest testament to the quality of these Copic markers. I've always doubted wanting to use markers because I thought you could never get a solid color fill in. It would always be streaky or tear up the paper or just get really dark if you tried to go over it with many layers whereas this one you can see it blended that box is almost completely solid i could even make it look better now that i kind of know how to work with them and i've never been able to achieve that effect before with other markers so that is what i love about copics here I'm using the white paint pen to get the lines in the box. I think using the white instead of using the wine fine liner just gives it a softer look. I think all the supplies from the box really work out great together. Now here I'm just showing you the different ways you could add it to your bullet journal. Now since these markers are alcohol markers, I'm going to try and use them the same way that you use alcohol ink. I've got my 91% alcohol, my markers, and a blow dryer, and that is all you need. Immediately I used that dark color and I put it on really thick in a really small spot, and that didn't seem to work well because no matter how much alcohol I used, it kind of left a mark of where it started. So I tried spreading it out a little bit more and having some light around the edges. That seemed to work a bit better, but you can see in the center that blue mark behind everything is where I had drawn with the actual marker. I could never get that to completely fade. Although I've seen a few people do this with the markers, the majority of people that I see doing this are actually using the ink refills for the marker because when you do that, you just have the liquid ink and you're basically doing the same thing you do with alcohol ink. Whereas with the markers, when you're drawing onto the paper, it's kind of going to leave a little bit of a mark behind. So although it didn't 100% work out, it was still really fun to do and I didn't have any of these purple or blues in the inks that I got. So it was fun to try it out with a different color scheme and I've always just been curious about this when I see people using the Copics. So I had fun, I got it to work, I actually liked the way it turned out, it was just a little bit difficult to do it. I added some splatters here at the end, and although you can kind of see some of the marks in the middle, what I'm actually going to do to have it in my bullet journal is going to have the middle covered up, so it's not a problem. Once you're done, you just take the tape off. You can use some alcohol to clean up any marks on the edges. Like I said, I'm probably going to use this as my January cover page. So I'll put a piece of paper in the center like that and write January on it. You could also leave it blank and write the month or use a stencil to write a quote. You could do anything you want with it, but it's just a really nice background. I had a lot of fun playing with these markers. I really enjoyed this month's box. Let me know what you thought and don't forget to subscribe.